Hey there, Ben Lipper here. So recently I've been getting a whole bunch of questions on how to code a catapult. So if you've got a catapult robot, there's, you know, all kinds. There's the kind from Fling, you know, very simple single catapults. So there's double wide catapults to even catapults. They hold like six or eight balls and then shoot two at a time and automatically like load in the next ones. So lots of different kinds of catapults. Fundamentally though, coding them is effectively going to be very similar. And so I want to walk you through the process of coding a simple and then a slightly more complex catapult, just so you can kind of see how we code them. There's a few kind of tricks that I also want to show you some things that I do in my catapult code that has worked really well for making these catapults score as many points as possible. So if you want to follow along, if you got a catapult robot, there's a link under this video, go ahead and click it. Um, it's going to go ahead and give you access to a workbook or not workbook, but like a reference sheet. So you can follow along with this video and it'll give you images of the code so that you can like see them in higher resolution as well. So go ahead and click that link underneath this video to get that worksheet and then let's go ahead and jump into VEX code. All right, so let's go ahead and get to coding this robot. We're gonna be coding first the fling and then I'm gonna move into a more advanced robot. So to code fling, the first thing you need is a drivetrain, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and add a drivetrain. I happen to know my drivetrain is on ports one and six. Gyros never seem to work well in driver control. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit done with that one. I've got that all good to go. Now I'm going to go ahead and add my catapult motor. For fling, it's a single motor. Some robots will have a motor group. For me, it's just a single motor on port five. I'm going to name that guy cat, just shorthand for catapult. And he needs to be reversed. There we go. I've got my cat on. I also am interested in adding a motor for my intake. So I'm gonna go ahead and click add another motor. I'll just name this one intake. This guy also often to know needs to be reversed for this robot specifically. Yours may not need to be. Um, it's just for the robot that I built, it needed to be reversed. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit done one more time. And now finally, you'll see on this robot, I've got myself a touch sensor right there to detect when the catapult hits the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that device as well. I'm gonna add a bumper sensor on port three and I'm just gonna call it cat down because that's what it is detecting. So I'll hit like that and we're ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit controller and I'm gonna set up my drivetrain first. That looks good. I could go ahead and add my intake and my catapult on these buttons if I wanted. And that would be totally valid. But I've got a special way of coding that I think will make this easier for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove those guys. And we are gonna just go ahead and hit done and we're gonna code them manually not because the controller codes them badly, but because there's a better way to do it. So let's go ahead and check it out. First things first, let's code the catapult just because that's higher on our list. The first thing that you want to know is that VEX code sets your velocity to 50% by default. We want to make sure we're getting the maximum speed out of our catapult. We'll set the velocity to 100%. Additionally, VEX automatically sets the stopping mode to coast. Not super useful. We want it to be on hold for a catapult. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add those blocks. What they do exactly is not super important, but just know that those guys are a good way to initialize your program and kind of get all the things ready to go. Now, I need to decide on a fire button. I'm gonna use R up as my fire button right now. So I'm gonna select R up on the controller. When R up is pressed, I wanna start a firing sequence. Let's see what this firing sequence looks like. Basically, in order to fire the catapult, what needs to happen is it needs to spin so that it shoots the ball and then it's also going to go ahead and reload the catapult there's no reason the catapult needs to be up in the air you know you'd want it to go up and then slowly come back down and come to the bottom so when it's pressed we're going to go ahead and spin that catapult motor forward additionally we are going to want to wait until that bumper sensor is pressed so i'm going to go ahead and add a wait until block there and i can find my cat down which is the name of my bumper sensor right wait until cat down is pressed and then I'll just go ahead and stop the catapult. And this looks all good, except we have a slight problem. When you push R up, usually the catapult's all the way down already. So cat down is already pressed. Because of how fast the brain thinks, it's gonna whip through this. It's gonna start spinning the catapult. It's gonna wait until cat down is pressed, but it won't have spun enough to actually shoot. And so cat down will still be pressed. That button is still gonna be pressed. So what I'm gonna add is just a wait one second in here so that it actually shoots. If you don't have that wait one second, likely what's gonna happen is the catapult will just like stay down and you push the button and nothing happens. So we're gonna go ahead and add that guy in there. Additionally, we need to code our 
intake. So our catapult's done, it's time to code our intake. Intake, I wanna be on three different buttons. I want our up to go ahead and be a start intake button. If you think about it, usually you want your intake spinning forward, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and have a button, specifically L up, that is going to start my intake spinning forward. So when I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and spin it forward. Now, I don't want it to stop the intake when I let go of the button. I want it to just keep spinning. The only way to stop the intake is going to be by pushing L down. So L down is going to be my stop intake button. So when L down is pressed, we are going to go ahead and stop the intake, right? You gotta make sure they say intake. Now, what if I wanna spin it backwards? I'm going to go ahead and use a uh, last button on the top that I haven't used. We've used R up, I'm gonna go ahead and use R down. So when R down is pressed, we are going to go ahead and spin the intake in reverse. Now, how do we stop the intake? Usually, do I want the intake spinning in reverse for a long period of time? No, right? So when I go ahead and release that R down button, it's gonna go ahead and stop spinning the intake. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this guy. And when R down is released, I will stop that intake. All right, finally, we gotta make sure we do this thing that we did for the catapult for the intake as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch all of these guys to intake. And let's go ahead and download this to the robot and see what happens. So go ahead and plug in your brain, hit that download button. All right, so we have our catapult code on our robot and downloaded. Let's go ahead and see how it works. So here I've got the controller. Let's go ahead and try driving. Sure enough, driving seems to work. We're looking good. That's pretty exciting. Let's go ahead and try the more interesting commands. We have a start intake button right here, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and tap that guy. And sure enough, our intake starts spinning. If I wanna stop it, I just hit that one. All right, we're all good so far. Now I'm interested in spinning it backwards. Maybe a ball got jammed in here and I gotta get that out of there. Let's see what happens. I hold that guy down, spins reverse until I release it. And then it's perfect. Now here's the big button. Let's see if the shooting sequence works. I'm gonna hit shoot. And sure enough, it fires. It would have fired a ball if there was in, the one in there, but I didn't put one in. So this is the code that I use on all of my advanced robots. The only difference is that instead of using this touch sensor right here, we use an optical sensor. Let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. So as you can see on this robot, there's no touch sensor. Instead, we actually have two of these light sensors, one on each side, and they're looking at each other. And one of them has its light on. And basically what's happening is the light is shining out of one, past the catapult, and then into the other one. And so if the catapult's up, the sensor, the detector one, can detect the light from the one that's shining. If the catapult is down, however, it cannot detect that light. And so we know the catapult is either up or down and we don't even have to touch it. Even though this seems like a weird concept, it's actually super common. It's called a beam brake sensor. In industry, they use them all over the place. So let's go ahead and check out how to code this guy. All right, so here we are back in VEX code. Let me show you how to do one of these more advanced robots that uses a light sensor. So instead of waiting until cat down is pressed, I'm gonna go ahead and throw that away we are going to instead have two light sensors. Now, one light sensor is just going to be the light. I'm gonna go ahead and put that on nine. I'm gonna call it light. Now, the other light sensor is going to be the detector. So I'm gonna add a color sensor on port 10. I'm gonna call this the detector, just to keep it different from cat down. There we are. So how are we gonna do this? The light needs to be turned on. So I'm going to go ahead and in looks, there's a set light to 100%. Remember, this is a color sensor, right? But it's got a little light on the front, and so it'll turn on and it'll set it to 100% power. Now, this other one, for the detector, I need to go ahead and wait until the detector's brightness in percent is less than a certain number, right? Because the catapult's gonna go ahead and come in between the light emitter, like the light itself, and the detector. And that's gonna make it darker. So I want to wait until this is less than a certain value. And it says 50, I don't know, sure, I'd try it at 50. No guarantees that's gonna work. So, you know, best way to find out is experiment. If you hit the button and your catapult like keeps spinning round and round forever, then maybe that means you need to adjust it. If it you hit the button and like it spins but doesn't reload all the way, that's also an indicator you need to adjust it. Finally, you may discover that you need a weight here that all help it so once it hits the detector if it's not all the way down you'll sometimes add like a wait 0.2 seconds 
to get it all the way down and like in the correct position. So this is actually all the code you need. You go to plug this in, you again might need to switch cat to be a motor group intake, might end up being a motor group as well, depending on how many motors you have on each of those subsystems. But this is like all the code that my robots use. They're really not that complex. The reason is because often when you put so much complex code in your robot, things stop working properly. So I like to keep my robot code simple and easy to use and really not that complicated. I mean, this whole thing fits on one screen and I should really delete cat down because if I'm using a light sensor, I don't have it. So this is the code for Spitfire. If you're wondering how it works, this is it. All right, so like I said before, if you followed along and you want those screenshots, if you want more details on how to set some of those numbers, or you just are interested in the differences between a light sensor and like a physical touch sensor, go ahead and click the link underneath this video to get that worksheet and it'll kind of explain everything that you need. You want to make sure you have that worksheet as you're going through this. As always, thank you so much for watching. Go ahead and like and subscribe and I look forward to seeing what you build.